Hi, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 51. We are looking at how to use Rust code from inside C code. And it doesn't just apply to C code, anything that, uh, um, you can, we're compiling Rust into a form that can be used from any languages that can talk the C calling convention. So C is just an example. Uh, um, so we are looking at the readme for this exercise. It says we need a C compiler. We do have a C compiler. If you don't, you might need to install Clang or GCC. Uh, I think I've got both. Um, and the first thing it says to do is change our cargo.toml. So it just looks like this. So let's change it and then we'll talk through what any of this means. Um, get rid of that indentation level. Okay. So name of it, version, edition, all fine. Um, but uh, we're, we're now talking about the library that we're building here. Um, it's going to be a library with the name CRC in Rust and the type of, uh, library crate that we're building is a dynamic library. So that means something that can be, um, uh, linked to dynamically by some C code. So uh, like at runtime. Um, so we're building like a, what's called a DLL in some places, I think. Okay. So uh, this, in this exercise, we're actually going to build some C code that actually calls this Rust code that's got, got, gets compiled. So let's have a look at that. So first of all, we need to write our C code, our Rust code, sorry. So, uh, somewhere. Yeah. I guess in lib.rs. Yeah. Okay. So we've already got some Rust code here. Which is, um, a, an implementation of CR, the CRC function, same one we saw in the previous exercise, but now it's implemented in Rust. Um, so we don't have to worry about any of this code. This is just Rust code that we want to be able to call from inside C. So we're going to uh, write something like this, which says there is a function called CRC which takes in some data and returns a U32. So it takes in some U8s and it returns a U32. So in order to expose that to C, we're going to need to take in not just the data, but the data and the length. The same as, whoops, the same as what we, what we're doing the reverse of what we did in the previous exercise. So do watch that if you haven't. Um, it's going to, in order to be able to call us from C, we need to be able to take in a pointer to the beginning of the data. Um, so this is going to be a pointer to a U8 because it's an array of U8. So the first the pointer is just a pointer to the first one and data length, which is how long that's, uh, that um, array is or that list. So we, that can be a U size and it's going to return. Well, it's going to return a U32. So I think that's okay. And then we're going to call this CRC Rust function by essentially making a slice from this thing. So now, how would we do that? Is there some kind of slice? Um, can I import something called slice? Yeah. So the slice module, um, should have a function, which I think I saw there. So slice from raw parts. All right. It, well, I was wrong. I shouldn't have imported slice. I should have brought in, uh, stood putter, a slice from raw parts. So let's just call this SL. And you construct that from a data and a length. So we've called the length data length. Now, what are the types on this? Uh, expects a star const t and a len. So, all right. So that's, that's exactly what we, said this C, this function was going to take in and we're just going to call this with that slice that we created hopefully um oh so it gives us back a pointer we want to turn it into a reference which i think we do by doing ampersand star and that's going to be unsafe i think so if i just unwrap this in if i wrap this in unsafe there we go. So I think, I'm not sure, uh, but basically what we're doing is slice from raw parts gives us back a pointer. Um, and let's just see what they do. Oh, no, look, they're doing exactly the same thing as we're doing here. So slice from raw parts gives us back a pointer to a slice, which we then dereference with the star and then ampersand to say, yep, 
Um, dereferencing that slice was unsafe, uh, and uh, but I want a reference to it that makes makes me believe that it is safe. Uh, and so I need some kind of explanation of why it's okay. Safety. Um, C callers must pass in a valid pointer to an array of values, or array of U8s, and the correct length. So basically, what I'm trying to say is this isn't safe unless the person calling us from C got it right. But if they got it right, this is indeed a valid slice, so we can create one using slice from raw parts, get a reference to it so that SL has just that simple type uh, reference to a slice, or a slice rather, and then we can pass it into our Rust code. So that it's unsafe because we have no idea what they're actually calling us with, but hopefully they did right. So I've implemented a CRC32 function. Um, which was this bit. Okay, so now this bit, create a C header file. All right, so we better make a header file so that our C program can um, like knows that this function exists. So CRC in rust.h going to look like this. And I think this is all done for us, right? So um, it takes in a data and length and returns a UN32, just like the other one. And then we're going to create a C function, or rather C program, which we'll call, uh, let's call it CRC in Rust dot c so you don't have to understand this c code right it's it, it it hopefully is not too bad to understand but basically we create an array where its length is the correct length is that right yeah it's got seven things in it um, and then we call our crc function which is the um the one we've just defined and then we print out the answer and we include the header file and the header file tells us that this CRC32 function exists, but it doesn't tell us where it is. And then we trust that the Rust build makes it so that it does exist. Um, so with all that in place, we ought to be able to, and I do have Clang installed, so hopefully this will work. We ought to be able to call Clang. I haven't actually tried this, honestly. Uh, oh, it was, should be called main.c instead. Of, oh, so let's rename it main.c. Um, and our target file is not actually there. So where, yeah, so, all oh, right, okay. So this command line is, is telling Clang, here's my main C file, and then here's a shared object file that you should link in. I happen to know these shared object files go into a slightly odd place. They go into, I think, here. Yeah. So maybe that'll work. Let's find let's find where it's gone to. So it's gone into target debug. And then I guess examples. No, not examples. Um exercise. No. Maybe G. Where has it gone? Let's have a look in there. Um, for, let's look inside target for something with a name of something dot shared object. A uh, load of stuff we don't need and not the thing we do need. So I'm going to keep searching for this after I've had some lunch. Right. So back to the next step. Next step is compile and run. Now we haven't actually built our code yet. And I noticed that they called it main.c here. So let's rename it. Um, main.c. Like so. Same thing, just called main.c. 
And yeah, so we're going to compile linking to the shared object, but we haven't actually built the shared object. So let's build it. So cargo build, uh, because of the, the cargo.toml thing where we said this is a lib, uh, dynamic lib, uh, that means that, um, our, our build builds a shared object instead of a, uh, an executable. And our shared object is going to be down here. It's going to be this .so file, which is slightly different from what they've got in the readme. But yeah, so we're going to do clang main.c and then what? Oh, and then, yeah, so basically, I guess include this shared object minus o main, um, which means make an executable called main. So that, I think that worked. So now we should have a, a main. When we run it, it prints out something not quite the same, almost the same. One, three, eight, six, seven. Yeah, same number, just printed slightly differently. Okay, so I think we're okay. So that worked. So what we've done there is we've run a C program, which calls this Rust. Oh, look, yeah, yeah. We, we, we write GRX here. Not sure why. <laughs> but anyway, uh, which calls a Rust function. So can we go to definition on that Rust function? So the Rust function uh, is declared in the C code. This this header file declares there is a function called CRC32, but it doesn't it's not defined anywhere in the C. Uh, but it is defined in our Rust. It looks like this. And when you call it, what it does is takes the data you gave it, which is this array and length, turns it into a slice that's safe for Rust code to use and then calls the normal Rust code. And the reason this CRC32 here is, is like gets linked up to the CRC32 that's mentioned in here is because we told it not to mangle, so it's got no weird Rust namespace thing on it. And we've got this extend C stuff here saying these types have got to be C, C doable types. So when you've got all that stuff together, you can do your clan compile. Or you could do the same thing in GCC with slightly different options to say compile this C code, but then link it up with the shared object. When we run it, it all executes. Um, and that's it. So that's how you can run Rust code from within C code or within some other uh, language that uses the C calling convention. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.